What's up guys, this is One Handy Dude. Today we're gonna to be going over the installation of a carbon filter and water softener whole house system. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through all the parts and uh, basically the process of how to get all this done. This particular model is from Pelican Water Treatment Systems. It is model number PSE2000. It comes with the two tanks. This tank is a water softening system. This one is a carbon filtration system. These are all the associated parts that come with your package. This is going to be your pre-filter sediment filter. That's the bracket that's over here. The two bypass valves that'll attach to the two tanks that you see that I just showed you. This is a filter that goes into the sediment filter that is down there. And then uh, they also include a little bit of uh, wash and wax for your stainless steel tanks. Um, along with that, they also provide or sell an additional installation kit, which is everything from this point over to the right, which includes the Teflon tape, a couple of adapters and connections, um, some stainless steel flex tubing, and instructions to go along with that. Now, this carbon filter has to be pre-soaked for 48 hours prior to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. Um, I won't be doing that on camera, but they provide you this hose adapter, which screws right onto there. You fill it, wait till the water comes out the other side, and then uh, let that sit for 48 hours prior to installation. The area that we're gonna be doing it in is gonna be a little tight. It's in a little closet over here but it's a one inch water main. That's, we're gonna tee off of that. We'll come off of that with the 90, uh, and then start with the sediment filter first. From there, we're gonna be going to the carbon filter. From the carbon filter, we go into the softening system, and then from the system the softening system, we go into the rest of the house. This unit particularly is rated, I believe, for four to six people or four to six bathrooms. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so it's day two now. Uh, well, day three actually. We let this tank sit for 48 hours, the uh, carbon tank, it's soaked. Now uh, for 30 minutes, we gotta run the water and let it drain out the uh, from the inlet we're feeding the water. So we're gonna let this run and then uh, after the 30 minutes, then we have to switch the hose over to the outlet side and reset the carbon that's inside of the tank for three minutes of runtime. All right, so now I've shut off the water, um, opened up a line upstairs to drain the water as far as I can out of the whole system. And now I'm going to go ahead and remove water from the rest of the line. Uh, that way I can make my cuts and there won't be any water spewing anywhere. Alright, so finally got the water drained all out. Uh, I'm going to be plumbing in two T's and a valve in between Essentially, T, valve, T. That way, the system can tee off of there. The valve will stand in the off position when the, the softener is in service. And uh, if for any reason it needs to be taken out of service or it's leaking or doesn't work, they can open up the valve and now they have a bypass to go through and uh, still feed water to the house. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this. Quarters are a little tight this time, so uh, we'll make it work. All right, so I did a couple things off camera. Uh, I ended up actually building this piece from fitting to fitting off here. Uh, easier to crimp. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the last two crimps done on this 
and then we'll start working over this way. If you've never uh, used one of these PEX crimp tools, I uh, highly recommend it. I like this over the other option of a crimp where it's a copper ring, like what's installed over here with the original plumbing. Um, these one head fits all sizes of crimp rings. You don't need to swap out the heads. And what it does is you'll get the fitting head in there. You crank down, it'll crimp it, and it won't let go actually until it gets to the point of a confirmed seal. Um, there's a calibration tool that comes with it. Uh, I really like them. They're handy, but they are quite a workout to clamp down, especially on this one inch pipe. So now we're going to start working out and this way. The idea is for me to put a valve over here, another valve over here. That way, when water is flowing, it will come in, go this way, loop through the system, come back over here and go up and feed the rest of the house. If uh, we ever need to isolate the system, we shut these two valves off. We open this guy up and we're ready to go. All right, so at this point, we have these two installed um, and everything is now safed off and isolated. We could technically turn the water back on. Uh, I'm not going to just for peace of mind uh, so I don't accidentally hit the valve somewhere and you know open up water while I'm working. Uh, but technically you could have water uh, back to the rest of the house. All right, continuing on. All right, so the first part of the system that's gonna go in is going to be what they call the pre-filter um, or the sediment filter. And uh, we're gonna get this set up right now. It comes with a bracket, screws, obviously the filter. Um, I'm going to be mounting this on the wall using a block of wood because unfortunately it is metal studding behind there. Um, I don't trust the metal studs enough to properly secure this or hold it. So what I'm gonna do is drill four holes, uh, use some toggle bolts and pop that in, mount this securely to the wall and then screw holes into here to mount the filter onto the wood. Um, they have that attached wrench that you can really get some leverage on there. I just don't want this ripping out of the wall and make sure it's properly supported. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead, get these screws in and the top of the bracket mounted. All right guys, so uh, we got this installed. Um, what I did was mount a block of wood like I talked about. Uh, I ran some issues with that because it was metal stud and then on one part it was concrete so I did have to run out get some concrete uh, screws anchor that in there use toggle bolts on this side get this uh, mounted up onto the block so it's much more rigid isn't going anywhere uh, I've started mocking up a little bit of how the pipe is going to lay out and uh, I installed these two fittings these two fittings are actually part of that installation kit that I was talking about uh, that is an additional package uh, but I find it makes life a lot easier. This side has what they call uh, similar to shark bite um, fitting, you know, slips in there, seals, 
can easily be removed by pressing down on that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up this part and uh, we'll continue on. Wasn't sure if you guys are getting a close enough view with my with my back or the actual work that I was doing, so I figured I'd move the angle. All right, so we're back in. We finally got the uh, the carbon filter soaked and flushed. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove and save the hose adapter. That's this piece right here. Uh, you will need this in the future when you need to uh, transfer out your carbon. Um, that'll be in a later video, but make sure you hang on to this piece because you will need it. Setting that aside, uh, as you can see, we are in tight quarters over here. Um, unfortunately, because this closet is so small, this is the only way to lay it out. Um, the pipe that would hook up to here is not going to is going to cause issues with clearance because obviously the tank is right here. So I have a solution for this. What I'm going to be doing is removing this adapter, uh, putting in a male threaded adapter that's going to hook onto a 90 in PEX and have that turn down um, and then hook the installation hose that way in that way. Um, you don't, you're not necessarily going to need to do this, but it is a solution if it is a tight fit uh, like this is. All right. So uh, as you can see, we've made some changes. Pulled out that fitting that was over here that went straight, threw in a, a PEX male adapter and a 90 so that way when the pipe connects to it, it's not going to end up sticking out into our area where the tank is going to be. Uh, we're going to end up shaping it in a way where it plugs in over here and gets in, it goes into the back, connects into the back of the tank. Um, these are proprietary fittings that uh, Pelican provides when you connect them onto the bypass valve over here. What I like to do, and this is absolutely not necessary, um, I like to throw a little bit of Teflon onto there. It just makes screwing these on a lot easier. Uh, what you want to do when you're fitting this in, it comes with a rubber O-ring over here. You set that in, in there, kind of wiggle it in, make sure that bottoms out and then you go ahead and screw this on. The reason I really like to do the Teflon thing is just uh, for in the future when it needs to be removed it just makes the Teflon, the Teflon makes it easier to uh, remove and uh, slide uh, less friction. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tank in there and uh, then we're going to go ahead and connect all the pipes. Oh, also, another thing that I added that was off camera was I, since uh, I can't get any 45 degree bends in the one inch pecs, I made a swing out of two 90s. So came down, over, connected it to another 90. That way you can kind of articulate at any angle you want. Um, and then that'll come over and I'll hook into the other side.
so the nice thing about these fittings, I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier, uh, they're kind of similar to, um, what do you call it? The uh, shark pipe fittings. They're a slip fitting that has an inner O-ring that slips right onto the pipe and uh, seals up nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that in. And then you pull back a little bit and make sure that it's set. Okay, so now we have the pipes hooked up. Uh, next step would be to get the filter installed for the uh, sediment. And uh, this is what they send you. It's a five micron filter. You're gonna open it up. And uh, on the inside of this, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little pipe or a stand that's in there. You're gonna take the filter and the plastic part and set it down into the standoff that's there. You can check to verify by looking down the center. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then, On. You're going to want to hand tight. Then they you usually tap add the included filter wrench. Get it on there. And just snug it up. Don't go crazy on this. It doesn't take much. One thing I do like is they have a hole attached or a cut into the mount. Normally I would uh, pop a screw and hang the filter over there. I like this. It shows a little bit of extra thought. So now uh, everything is hooked up. We're going to go ahead and test out our connections and uh, slowly open up the water lines. Make sure uh, we don't have any leaks. So the first process step that we're going to do for testing for leaks and filling the system is going to be to shut off the bypass valve. This is going to stay in the closed position when this unit is in operation. Now we're going to go ahead and slowly crack the in the fill side of the valves. Um, both of these bypass valves are currently in bypass mode, so nothing's going to actually enter the tanks. I like to slowly crack the valve so we don't shock the system with a sudden punch of pressure. Look around, make sure that there's no leaks anywhere. You'll hear the water flow stop. That's when the system's all filled up. And uh, looking around at all the connections, everything seems like it's holding well, no leaks, which is very good. That's what we want to see. Now, we're going to slowly open and crack the out feed valve. You won't hear much flow go through since uh, the system's already filled up. And everything looks good. 
what we're supposed to do is turn this the valves on the water softener into the on position not into bypass and then turn the water on so that's what we're going to do now that will ultimately start filling up the nature soft it's supposed to soak for 60 minutes and then we will start the flush so it's opened up make sure you leave the carbon fil uh, filter in bypass you don't want water flowing through that just yet now we're going to crack open the flow valve again on both the in and out we're going to go up and open up the closest faucet so that way I can start bleeding all the air out of the water software condition and conditioner. I'll be right back. So once uh, you open up the closest water valve and bleed all the air out of it, you make sure that no more water is flow, no more air is flowing through or coming out of your faucet. Uh, you can go ahead and shut off the faucet. You this is now filled and it needs to soak for 60 minutes. Uh, we're gonna wait for the 60 minutes and uh, you know, periodically come back, check, make sure there's no leaks, and uh, then we'll proceed with the flush. Um, the manual does say that you can now switch this back into bypass if you need to restore water to the house. I don't right now because there's no one here and we don't need any water, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. All right, guys, so uh, it's been 60 minutes. The tank is now soaked for the full 60 minutes. Um, they, go, they say to go ahead and now open your valves or faucets up to achieve a high rate of flow, which is five gallons per minute. Uh, the way to achieve this, they said, is to either open up a tub fully open the, the water valve fully open and let that flow for five minutes or another way to achieve that is to run three faucets at um, full flow. Uh, if you are going to go with the three faucets, I do highly recommend that you walk around for those five minutes and make sure that your drain isn't backing up or you're going to, you might potentially overflow the sink. Um, definitely don't want that happening. Uh, while you're waiting for the 60 minute soak over here, um, I did go ahead and take off the protective film, which reveals this nice, pretty stainless steel. Uh, they say to go ahead and wax it with an automotive wax uh, one to two times every year. Um, and then to also go ahead and put these pretty little stickers on. So I'm going to do that off camera. I don't think I need to walk you through that. I think it's essentially for aesthetics to make them look nice and shiny and pretty and uh, make sure they stay that way. Um, after the five minutes of high flow flush, you shut off all but one of the faucets and leave that open at a rate of half gallon per minute flow. Um, they say that you can achieve that by cracking the valve a quarter of a turn um, on hours, a quarter of a turn is full flow, so I kind of uh, opened it up and used my best judgment for that. Um, and then that will run for 60 minutes. Uh, meantime, this is still in the bypass mode, the carbon filter. This is in the flow through mode. Um, once the 60 minutes is up, we will go ahead and bring this into full functioning order and be ready for some nice, soft, filtered, tasty water. All right, guys, so uh, we're nearing the end of the process, finally. Um, we let this flush for another 60 minutes at uh, the half gallon per minute rate. Shut the faucet off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this into service by opening the bypass valve and putting it into regular run mode. So that's open, that's open, again, check for leaks, 
everything looks good over here and uh, I don't know if you guys can see but I threw on those stickers made them look all nice and pretty buffed and shined and uh, we are now in operation so uh, that's about it if you guys have any questions you know post them in the comments down below um, I really appreciate you guys coming and watching this video um, you know this really isn't very difficult to do it just uh, takes a little bit of time and the necessary tools but it's pretty straightforward I think overall the uh, that installation kit that they included with with the uh, the package really does work very well makes life a lot simpler um, especially because you know they're flex fittings uh, they are stainless steel so they'll hold up very well and um, yeah I think that I'll be very happy with the quality of the water that comes out of this as always like subscribe thumbs up comment you know do what you do YouTube appreciate you guys taking the time again we'll see you on the next one